Good afternoon. Wonderful day today. In fact, it's actually going to be a really good weekend, especially on a Father's Day weekend. Perfect temperature, which is odd for the Central Valley because generally right around this time, we normally would be in the high 90s to the 100s. But um, this weekend is a weekend that is allowing many of the trees to kind of just relax and cool down a bit. So. Continuing on our weather about uh, the easiest tropical fruit trees to grow, guavas. Easiest, and in my opinion, a gateway drug to tropicals. Um, so starting off with um, Vietnamese guava here. This guy is a Vietnamese guava, as well as its younger brother here. Younger as in, well, both of these were actually planted at the same time, but this guy somehow just took off while the uh, guy next to it is, uh, it, it's, it's growing, it's just not as big as this guy. So yeah, Vietnamese grabber. Moving down the food forest here. So I should mention, just because gravas are just so easy to grow, I do have a number of them in the yard. So the, the term easy, is relative to your environment. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what I mean by that. So, Thai guava. Now, I've noticed the Thai guava, the Thai varieties, tend to be a bit more cold sensitive than, than the other ones. Uh, but they, they've, I, I've not had a Thai guava die on me, let's just say. So, it's bouncing back nicely from the, the frost that we had a few months back. Behind it, relatively fast grower. Um, it is, he's a Taiwanese guava. Uh, getting to the neighbor's side. Yes, Taiwanese guava. As you can see, he's in a container. Guavas are quite flexible in that, that you can plant them in ground. Uh, they, they'll do great in ground as well as in containers. They also do pretty good in containers though. Got this guy in the ground. So, what else? Oh, so <laughs> there is a slight caveat with, with the word easiest to grow when it comes to gravas. Not all varieties, well, not all guava varieties behave the same, uh, particularly when it comes to frost tolerances. This guy right here. He's a goner. There is just no life in him. In the ground, frost came, knocked it down. He is a pro grabber. So, just like the Thai varieties, some guava tend to be a bit more sensitive to the cold than others. But, you know, try, try and error. Moving on. This uh, relatively tall guy here, uh, well, he is reaching a good, I would guess, about 15 foot tall, relatively matured, is a tropical pink guava. Another uh, guava that is right here, a ruby supreme guava. Got another guava right here that is still flowering and continues to do so. Is a pineapple guava. So going down the list here. Oh, uh, a guava that's back here is a red Malaysian guava. Yeah, red Malaysians, uh, I've noticed that they are slower growing than the other guavas. And, well, of course, how can we forget the very first guava that we have in the ground? This set right here, this is uh, a tropical white. So this particular tropical white, along with the tropical pink there, 
is probably as tall and as big as you, you'll get uh, in, in the in our climate in Central Valley. But they, they are quite heavy producers. Um, the, the thing too with gravas oftentimes is because they are such heavy producers, you have to structurally support the, the fruits just because they are so, the, 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 the branches are just quite brittle. So oftentimes the, the branches, because of the amount of fruits on the branch, actually causes them to break. So that being the case, we, we do uh, structurally support them just a lot. So tropical white here. A guava here that's right in front of me of unknown variety. Uh, it's white inside. Uh, quite good. It is really, really good. I just, you know, unfortunately have no idea what variety it is. So, and, and this is what I mean by uh, heavy producer. I mean, if, if you look at the guavas, the, the fruits here, I mean, there's two here, there's two here, there's four here. I mean, there's no way that this little branch is going to be able to support all this fruit. So, I, I mean, you know, I, I can choose to thin it out, but uh, what I normally do is I normally just let the tree do its thing, and, and it, it, the tree will know to naturally drop the fruits that it can't support. But sometimes it doesn't know that and uh, that's where you uh, run into trouble with the fruits being overloaded on the tree. So, more guavas. Well, actually, it's like, where should I begin? Oh, let's focus on this uh, Indian white here. He's an Indian white guava, also relatively matured. Uh, yeah, the, uh, right around this time, right around May and June, this is when they they uh, put out the, the flush of growth. So he, he's looking a bit chlorotic, so I, I need to give him some chelated iron. Oh, uh, how can I forget? <clears throat> More guavas, Thai varieties, of course. Uh, as well as the other Thai variety back here. So, you know, on an unrelated note here, so when we had stopped by Mimosa two weeks ago, got a bunch of uh, additions to our food forest. Uh, Malay apple, of course sugar apple, red custard apple, santal, so I'm just waiting for this weekend, the perfect time to put these in the ground. Just because pre previous weekends, it had just been just a bit too hot in my opinion. So this weekend is going to be the perfect time to put these guys in the ground. Uh, and the newest addition uh, to our guava family, another Ruby Supreme. However, this is a seedless variety. So seedless Ruby Supreme. So I'm pretty excited to uh, try out that guy once it fruits. More guavas. Um, another guava of unknown variety. Uh, I, I'm actually, as you can see, I've actually pruned this guy down heavily. And I'm actually, my plan is really to graft these uh, um, branches here with other known varieties. Uh, I mean, it, it, it tastes okay. It, it's not... It's not going to be like a Ruby Supreme tasting guava. It, it's, it tastes okay, but I just want to see if I can just grab uh, other known varieties to it. And uh, another guava back here, uh, as you can see, uh, this is an Indian pink. Yep, he's an Indian pink. Yeah, he is an Indian pink. Uh, the thing too with guava is the fact that, as you can see here, they propagate quite easily from uh, seeds. Uh, in fact, all of these gravas were at one point grown from seed. They are approaching about two, two and a half, three years old. More seedling gravas uh, than what we know to do with them. We're just uh, growing them just because, why not? <laughs> uh, let's see. You know what, let me, uh, let me get to the other side here for you. So, one more guava here.
Oh, hey, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> I probably should take this guy out, but this is a, uh, a boof chair moya. <laughs> um, <laughs> one more guava here. He is a, a, another Vietnamese guava, uh, quite heavy producers. And best of all, not guava. This actually is something that you shouldn't eat. It, it, in fact, it's actually poisonous, but I just really like it. I mean, very happy looking mimosa pudica. Look at that. It's like, I just like to come out here to the yard and just start touching this guy. But yeah, so anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take you to the front where I, I've got a few more guavas to show you. Yard. So, more guavas. A Taiwanese guava, also known as a century guava. So as you can see, the vast majority of my guavas are grown in full day sun. With guavas, give them as much sun as possible. Uh, they, they will appreciate it. And there's a, uh, another Thai guava back here. For its size, uh, he is uh, producing a bit too much fruit, so I may end up just thinning him just a bit. Uh, but once again, the Thai guavas are slower growing, produces massive softball-sized fruits quite sweet very very sweet and a guava that is right above us another uh, ruby supreme guava again uh, i'm gonna have to thin these guys out because there's just no way that this branch is going to be able to support all these fruits uh red malaysian uh yeah so um <laughs> yeah it's uh, the, the thing with red Malaysian guavas is you, you want the, the fruits to be on the tree for as long as possible. When you eat, when you take out the fruits a bit too soon, they, there's, there's a, a hint of bitterness to it. So you want it on the, the tree as long as you can. But red Malaysian, of course, uh, more Thai guavas because why not? Very heavy producer. And one more guava. Perhaps the heaviest producing varieties. Strawberry guava. This guy is just a heavy, crazy heavy producer. Um, so as you can see, I've, I've had just way more guavas than I really can consume at any given point. So what, what ended up happening uh, in my case really is um, as the fruits ripen on the tree and because I can't pick them in time, um, they basically get recycled back into the, the, the earth and it makes a great fertilizer. Um, <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, he's out here in full day sun. So, that's guava for you. So, just going just on a random tangent here. Uh, you know, I just uh, was just in my local supermarket the other day and just came to the realization, which I've never really paid attention to it in the past, but I came to the uh, realization that um, you know what? Fruits are actually quite expensive, <laughs> especially now with um, inflation that we're getting. So that being the case, I mean, just why not just grow your own? Especially fruits that you really, I mean, gravas, you, you can find them in most grocery stores, particularly around the ethnic grocery stores, in your ethnic grocery stores. But, um, they, they are actually quite expensive, I've noticed. So why not just grow your own? And, and once you start growing your own, and, and once your soil is, it's got the life that it needs to sustain additional life, 
this is what's going to happen. I mean, volunteers, chamoyas. We ate the chamoyas, dropped the seeds and skins here, and it just starts to grow. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, and going back to guavas, uh, guavas are, in addition to being just crazy delicious, um, they're full of vitamin C. Uh, just really one average size guava is going to meet your vitamin C intake for the day. So, guavas, one of the easier f tropical fruit trees to grow here. Um, I have s seen a lot of guava trees throughout my neighborhood. Unfortunately, one thing I've noticed people, big mistake that people keep doing, especially in winter time, is they use tarp, just plain old blue tarp, and, and just using that as a, a, a frost fabric. Don't do that. You're, you're causing more harm to your guava due to the distribution of the coal to, onto the leaves than if you were to just leave the guava tree alone and just let it go through winter. Um, for the most part, it probably, your tree is probably going to be okay. Unless, like me, you get like a specialty variety, like a, 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 um, a pro guava. But for the most part, the guavas that you find in your big box stores are probably going to be either pineapple guava, tropical pink guava, or tropical white guava. And those do great here. Uh, especially during our cold and in the summer. So anyhow, that's guava for you. All right, have a good afternoon.